Welcome back, Sky here, and today I'm going to be showing you a little program that I've been working on for quite a while now. This is my Minecraft Combat Simulator. So what it does basically is it takes your setup, which is the armor that you're currently wearing, in addition to whatever status effects you currently have, and then it also takes a source of damage, and it calculates just how much damage you're going to take given your armor and the type of damage. So let me show you how it works. You can go to this website up here, which is skytechfights.github.io slash mc pvp simulator. So when you visit the site, the first thing you'll see is this right here. So it provides you with the starter setup right here, which is the typical OP setup that you might encounter. So you can change the helmet type the chest plate type, the leggings type, and the boots type, and all the related enchantments with that. If you don't want one, then you can just exit out, or if you do want one, you can click the plus sign and then any of the available enchantments. So you can also add effects such as like resistance, health boost, absorption, etc. So I can do like this and this, and I'll update this bar up here. So this is the amount of armor that you have, this is the amount of armor toughness that you have, this is the amount of health that you have with this particular setup. The next panel that you need to know is this one right here, which is the weapon that you will be using to attack this armor. So you can choose the type of weapon and whatever material it's made out of. So I can choose like a diamond sword, whether it's a critical hit or not a critical hit, how long you wait before you swing your sword or your trident or whatever it is. Just hit max if you want the optimal amount of time and these are the enchantments that are on said weapon and whatever effects you may be under. So for example, if I wanted to be under the effect of strength one and instead sharpness three, I would change it like so. And if I didn't want strength one, for example, I would click the X. Now, if you look over here, this number right here that I'm highlighting is the amount of damage that the raw damage that you will take if you had no armor on at all. So this is different from the damage that you'll take given you had some armor on. So if you want to see how much damage you will actually take, the true amount of damage, click Add to Simulator and scroll down right here. And I'll show you right here. And also right here, the number of hearts that you'll have after you take this amount of damage. So if you take 12.5 hearts of melee damage, raw melee damage, you will take, the changes right here, exactly 1.56 damage, true damage, given that you have this particular setup here, with full netherite, with protection 4 on 3 pieces, and resistance 1. You can also see this number right here, where it says melee, it will say that you have 1.56 damage taken from this 12.5 hearts of input damage. So I can change this around as much as I like. So for example, if I change it to sharpness 2, you'll see right here it updates immediately. This is instead of 12.5 hearts, it's now 12 hearts. And it will show that instead I take 1.478 points of damage exactly from a melee attack given this setup right here. Now, allow me to di direct your attention down to the simulator right here. So this is where you can kind of simulate a encounter. And here you can add different sources of damage. You can see how that affects your player. So let's say I took a critical hit right here with a sharpness three melee. And then I took a non-critical hit. I can click add to simulator and that will popped up right here. And it'll show that the second hit would deal exactly 0.948 points of damage to leave me with 17.492 health points left. And this is after 1.25 seconds. So if I wait 0.625 seconds, then I hit, then I wait another 0.625 seconds and then hit again, then I will be left with 17.492 health points remaining. And I can adjust that right here. So if I wanted, let's say I got hit like multiple times, I can up that. 
and you can see I guess how many hits it takes for you to reach zero health so if like an assailant kept attacking me like 15 16 17 18 19 20 it will take me 20 it will take 20 hits with a diamond sword at 100% meaning that they it's a fully charged diamond sword hit with sharpness 2 20 hits in addition to this why well, I can uncheck that it would take actually 22 hits with a fully charged diamond sword with sharpness 2 to get me to die essentially and in the fastest that could occur would be in 13.75 seconds the fastest not necessarily how long it will take, but just like if you timed it perfectly, then this is how long it would take. As you can see, it's here kind of color coded. So you can change what you see and what you don't see. So for example, this, this just shows if you have just steps checked, and it shows what your health is at every time step. So as you can see, it just goes down, down to like negative, which is zero. Now, if you just have changes checked, it'll show you how much damage is done in each time step, which is every single hit will be exactly 0.948 points of true damage. And that would get you down to zero, which you will see at the end right here. This is just a summary up here. If you say see percents, you can see the, the numbers in percentage form or apps are just regular numbers. And of course you can reorder the amount of damage that you take so like you can put the diamond sword hit like afterward and it will show that right here that this critical is after here or you can move it around and it automatically adjusts so you don't need to do anything strange this is a sharpness three and this is a sharpness two and you can see right here that this is for example 1.56 damage instead of 0.948 you can duplicate you can delete the the damage right here, etc, etc. So that's really the basics, that's all you really need to know. So just the setup, the damage, the actual weapon, and then the simulator. Now for some more advanced usage, um, now I'll be talking about, I guess, multiple setups, I guess. So if you want to compare different setups, so let's say like, oh, I want to say, uh, maybe I want to compare this fully full netherite protection force set to this like leather this leather set right here i can just put in leather 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 and let's say i wanted to see what how like what is it protection protection three and you'll see right here that's color coded of course so this is blue as you can see by the sign um on the left right here and this is red as you can see by the red bar on the left and you'll notice that over here, there's now a second entry, that which will show you how much damage the attack does to this setup. So as you can see, this 8.5 uh, heart damage attack of type melee will do 0.948 damage to the netherite set right here, but it will actually do 5.749 damage to the leather armor set, which is significantly more. And you can see also here that based on it's everything is color coded, remember. So this is blue, that refers to another set, and this is red, which refers to the leather set. And so you can see right here that right away that in one stroke, the first hit will instead of 1.56 damage, will do 8.968, and so on and so forth. So I would technically die after just three hits. And so if the latter I mean the prior, which would take around like 20 hits. So in this way you can compare different sets and how different, and you will be able to see how different damage sources affect these sets. So once again, for more advanced usage, you can also have, in addition to multiple sets, you can have multiple different types of damage sources. So currently the ones that are supported are the melee damage, fall damage, explosion damage, fire damage, projectile damage, and magic damage. So the, here are these calculators right here. I'm going to go through each one, one by one. So the first one right here is the general calculator. So let's say you know how much damage something is going to deal to you. So let's say I know I'm going to take seven hearts of whatever, uh, sorry, seven damage points of whatever, um, whatever type of damage it is. And just like leave the ticks as is. 
So I can say it's type melee, it can be fall damage, explosion damage, fire, etc, etc. And it'll change the type. So I guess we can do a little experiment right here. We can have, we can duplicate this right here so we can see how, and delete this. And we can see how the two damages compare. So one, one thing I can, one difference I can make is for like, I can have feather falling um, four right here. And this one has no feather falling four. And we can see the differences in damage based on this singular modification. So let's say I ha took seven points of damage right here and it was fall damage. And I'm going to see right here, it updates automatically right here, that with the blue setup, which is my now my leather without, um, without feather falling, I take 5.32 hearts of damage. However, with my red setup, which does have feather falling four, I take only 1.96. So that equates to, if you check right here, a reduction of 72% instead of 24%. And you'll see that that's a result of the enchantment protection factor, which I will not go into detail right here, but it's just here for your reference. So other things you can do, like for example, you could have, um, let's say projectile magic, I sorry, projectile damage. You'll be able to see the difference. So if I added like, for example, oh, let's say I added projectile protection four to the, to this setup right here, you'll see right here in this column right here, this one right here you'll see that it takes significantly less damage when you have projectile protection for the details of which I will not go into in this video, but just know that there are some formulas going on behind the scenes as to how this is calculated, which I am pretty sure are correct, hopefully. Now you can also have same thing for magic and fire damage. You get the idea there. You can apply all the different types of enchantments that you normally would be able to do, and they should reflect properly hypothetically I, th I think they do and now we can go into these other damage calculators so let's say you don't know the exact damage that you want let's say you you all you know is that you have you just got blown up by some piece of tnt and you want to know how much damage that tnt did to you so there's a calculator for that so if i had tnt right here it, it knows that TNT is explosion power four. That's, and here's some numbers which determine how much damage is calculated. So let's say you are standing on top of the TNT and so you are 100% um, exposed to the TNT and you're also on normal difficulty because explosion damage is determined by what difficulty you, on, you are on. You'll take exactly 57 hearts of damage. I mean 57 um, health points of damage. And you'll also see right here that with our setups right here, we can shield 28% of that damage because we are wearing leather with protection three. Even more so if you ha change this protection to, for example, explode blast protection. So if I change it to blast protection, it will automatically compute and this damage number would go down by a little. So that works with pretty much any um, type of explosion. Uh, it will adjust the damage accordingly and also based on the difficulty. So if it's easier, there's less explosion damage. Otherwise it's harder, there's more explosion damage. Now finally, for our final damage calculator right here, we have the fall damage calculator. Fall damage is a little tricky to calculate because there's some weird things going on behind the scenes with how fall damage is calculated, but this gives a general rough idea. So if you just fell from a higher height, this is like the range of damage you could take. It just says for heights less than 23, use the max value. And so heights greater than 23, try and use the min value. As I said before, this is an approximation, but it should be between these two values, which is like one point of damage. So as you can see, it automatically adjusts down here um, what, what, how much damage you're going to take. So just make sure you look at the correct column. And of course, all of these you can add to the simulator and it will automatically take that into account. So if I deleted, I mean, if I took, turn this off, then you'll be able to see, oh, like if let's say you took a, a hit to the, from it with a diamond sword and then you did a 33 block fall, this is how much damage 
it would take and how much health you would have left. After all that, we have the graphs. So the graphs are for, I guess, like more, more um, just visualization. I mean, I doubt too many people would understand this without me explaining it, but I'm just going to open all the graphs right now. So, and I will go through each one, one by one. So the first graph here, so for weapon damage, it will give you some graphs right here and I will tell you what they mean. So before every attack, you have to wait a certain amount of time. And if you wait for a longer period of time, you do more damage up until some cap. Most um, people know this, I believe. Now, what is probably less known is the exact formula behind that damage calculation. So here I can give you a graph of how long you wait before you attack in ticks and how much damage, raw damage output and true damage output you will actually do. So remember, raw damage is before uh, armor is taken into account and true damage is after armor is taken into account. So let me change this so it looks slightly different based on the curve. So let me change this to production four and this to um, production four. So as you can see here, there's a, a little bit of discrepancy ju just to illustrate. Once again, these things are color coded. So the, de the, the curves are color coded. So this red setup right here cor corresponds to this um, red line right here. And this blue setup right here corresponds to this blue line right here. So make note of that. Let me explain the, I guess, raw damage first. As time goes on, this is how much da raw damage you will output. So if, if you wait exactly 12 ticks, um, which is approximately uh, 12 over 20 seconds, then you will be able to do the maximum amount of damage, which is 8.5, if you can look at my, my mouse and where it is in the graph. Whereas if you wait less, it will follow this curve right here, Whereas if you wait like, for example, 10 ticks, you'll do only 6.729 raw damage and so on and so forth. You can kind of move your mouse along and see how much theoretical damage you will be doing. Now over here, how much actual damage you will be doing. So as you can see, the curves are different because you have different armor values and different armor values protect you at different rates. Fully charged attack, you'll do 5.749 damage on the blue setup, which is this one up here, and 5.14 on the red setup down here. And that will be decaying if you wait less. So that's why you charge your attacks, basically. And this is the, I believe this is the exact curve that, that, that Minecraft uses. It should be, theoretically, once again. Finally, we have these two graphs down here. So this, these are just graphs for the damage before the reduction and damage after reduction. So if you want to see information in a different format, you can look at this graph. So this applies to all types of damage. So not necessarily, this is, this these graphs right here that I'm opening and closing, those apply only to weapons. Whereas this one, these two graphs are just like for any type of damage. So like explosion, fall, magic, melee, any type of damage. The input output of your damage essentially. So like if you input, um, what is it? 18.151 damage and uh, you will output 11.651 true damage. So this is just a function um, between the amount of damage that you put in and the amount of damage that is actually done to the, the, the player. And this is just in a different format in terms of resistance. The thing that you can note here is that as you have lower amounts of damage, armor protects you more up until a certain point. So higher damage means that a smaller proportion of the damage is actually shielded in the end. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I worked quite a while on this. And if there are bugs, which there inevitably will be, please, I don't know, comment on the GitHub page right here. Or put it on the issues or something. Or let me know somehow, because I would like this to be as accurate as possible. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. See you later. Bye.